Subhashita sir, simple entry level shlokas into the world of literature and poetry. Uh, these Subhashitas are usually a collection of uh, shlokas um, where some authors, you may know the origin of uh, those shlokas, you may know the authors, but there are uh, some where you don't know. Uh, they're usually very simple shlokas, but when you analyze, there is a deeper meaning to it. For example, uh, one sh such simple shloka is... Um, Kaka Krishnaha, Pika Krishnaha, Kobhedaha, Pika Kaka Yoho, Vasantaka Lesam Prapte, Kaka Kaka, Pika Pikaha. So it has a very simple meaning. The crow is also black in color, the cuckoo is also black in color. So, what is the big difference between the two of them? But when springtime comes and both of them open their mouths, the crow, Kakaha, we know, we identify it by the harsh sound that comes out of it. Whereas the coil, cuckoo, uh, has a very beautiful and melodious sound that emanates from it. So we understand the difference between the two. Now this, it is, it is in the perspective of the object that there is a difference. It may seem apparently similar, but there is a world of difference between the two when they open their mouth. Now, Vedanta Deshika has written a work called Subhashita Nivi. It's a wonderful text where he has a lot of these uh, Subhashitas, but the import of it and its applicability is far beyond the worldly objects that he, uh, the shloka seems to apparently describe. Now, Vedanta Deshika takes this Simple shloka that we saw, simple subhashita, kaka krishnaha, pika krishnaha. He takes the same shloka and gives it a twist. He says, kakanam kokilanam cha sima bhedaha katham bhavet yadi vishwasrija saksham nakrita karna shashkuli. So how could there be any distinction between a crow and a cuckoo? So how can there be a difference? This, there is a Seema Bhedaha Katham Bhavet. How can we understand the difference? It starts off very similarly, where in the Subhashita it says, Ko Bheda Kaka Pika Yoho, Pika Kaka Yoho. But here he says, How can there be a difference? If that is where Vedanta Deshika gives a little twist in the second line, and he says, If the creator had not created an ear to listen to, along with the eyes to see, then there would be no difference between the two of them. This simple superficial meaning is, it's got a bit of a uh, humor in it. But then when you go and in deep into the meaning, the import of this, what he wants to convey is actually something beyond. Um, to understand the supreme entity, you cannot rely only on one pramanam. You don't rely only on your uh, uh, the sense of perception. You have to go by Shruti Pramanam, which is much more important than this. So, if one Pramana doesn't work, we will have to use the other Pramana and that Shruti Pramanam is more va uh, valid than your uh, sense of perception. That is, we may not be able to see the Supreme Lord directly but Shrutis are here to help us understand. And Shruti here means Veda. Uh, it also means our Karna Shashkuli. Karna Shashkuli is the orifice or the ear passage that you have and uh, through which you will listen and understand and that becomes a Pramana. So what seems apparently a very simple Subhashitam can also be taken in a different context and applied in a much deeper sense.